Well, number one, you got to be humble because you'll get humble to this level quick because everybody's good. Right. Understanding that to get rid of the distractions and, and play the game, the game is hard enough itself, but when you add on other things, you're going to get beat because you're fighting against multiple games. So our guys have to learn how to do that, and they will. We've got great leadership and guys that don't really care about other things. They don't care about the big scoreboard in right field or left field. You know, they, they, they want to compete to win and be the best team in the state, and we've got our hands full, but I guarantee you I want this team. I'll, I'll go to war with these guys any day of the week. Barrels, baby, good barrels. Well, you, you can't let the letters on someone's chest beat you, and, and, and a mature group will never let that happen, and, and that's always a challenge. Uh, for us, is, is you know, you don't have to play against Shaquille O'Neal. You don't have to stop Leonard Fournette. We have to compete and play our game. You know, the uh, the, the gods of, of yesteryear, so so to speak, are, are are not what we're up against. But if you allow it to, it will. And so we've got to learn to compete well here and, and do well here because this could be a place for us in a regional, which is part of our goals, is to be able to compete and, and, and be in this location. So uh, we just got to. Uh, you know, get rid of the outside part of it and, and, and compete against the game and not so much our opponent but our, the game and play the game the right way and eliminate mistakes and uh, be really hard to score on and fight and scrap for, for a run here and a run there. And if it's a low-scoring game, I like our chances. Starting leadoff hitter, he led off the entire first weekend against Wake Forest in Houston, and now he's been repositioned back to the number six spot. A one fastball, he'll line into center field, and that's one way to get back to the top of the order. First hit of the game for the Colonels, courtesy of their senior from Gulfport, Mississippi. Holt on first, no score in the game. 2-0 to Alex Tucker, and there goes Holt. Throw from Coombs is late, and Justin Holt has his second stolen base of the season. Mike Hanchar coming in off a seven inning, one hit, nine strikeout performance against the number 13 team in Division I last week. No score, runner on first, 1-1 one, one count to Robertson, and Hanshaw come back inside, pop fly left field, Niehaus, he's had a couple catches in left, give him a third, barely budge, two down, as Mike Hanshaw gets a deep fly ball to right field to lead off the inning from Smith, now a pop fly from Robertson, two down for Greg Dykeman. Well, even more amazing on Dykeman, uh, right before the season, he was hit in the face, and they thought he may be out for four to six weeks, and he didn't miss a game. Plus, he's been hitting the ball since the first at bat. They catch Freeman, pick off the first, now a rundown. Morales charging back to the bag, the throw to Knopf, it's there. Great read by Mike Hanshaw on the pickoff attempt. And for one of the best base runners in the country, Cole Freeman just got exposed by the Colonel Lefty on the mound. Well, and it was well played by the first baseman and the shortstop. 3-2 count to Alex Tucker. No score on the top of the fifth. There goes Holt, and Tucker lines the full count pitch in the left field. Wide turn on second. Holt will halt at third. Runners on the corners. No outs. Troy Cahill, this moment is yours. LSU has two pitchers warming up in the bullpen. They watching the Hess's pitch count also. 0-1 pitch, bunted up the first baseline. This is a problem. Slaughter will take the out. Colonels will take the run. one nothing Nichols. 2-1 pitch to Niehaus, lined into center field. It lands in front of Watson. Hard turn at third from Tucker. The throw from Watson, cut off. Colonel score, 2-0 on an RBI single by Chet Niehaus. Well, Niehaus uh, didn't need the speed there. He just hit it in the right space. And uh, running from second scored easily. Uh, the ball was cut off. It looked like it was it was not coming right at home plate. It was going down the third base line. So they made the right decision on cutting it off. And we said the Colonels have to strike first, and they've done that. Nerve-wracking sequence arriving for Mike Hanshaw and the Colonels. He is not allowed an earned run in two starts against UL Lafayette and LSU. But now runners on third and second. Back-to-back -back hits. Cole Freeman, second baseman extraordinaire. First pitch to him. Line down the left field line. It's foul. Now with runners on third and second. The 0-1 pitch. It hits him. And, and this has been the story of his season. He's been hit by four pitches in 36 plate appearances this year. He was hit by six pitches in 264 plate appearances all of last season. Mike Anchar, four and a third scoreless innings, but he will be responsible for Bo Jordan at third, Josh Smith at second, and Cole Freeman at first. Now a 2-1 pitch, and he hits down the left field line. Going back is Niaus. He makes the catch. It'll score a run, but you prevent the advancement from Freeman and Smith. 2-1 to one Colonels with two down in the fifth. Ernestine, runners on first and second, and the Colonel's up by a run. Let's do it again. One-two pitch, ground ball towards second. Play should be made by Valdez, drops to his knee, throws to first, and the Colonels will protect the lead. 
Great effort by Adam Tarver and Alex Ernestine. Bases were loaded with one down when Adam Tarver took to the mound. Gets a fly ball to left field. It did score Bo Jordan, but Alex Ernestine, he takes care of the rest. 3-2 pitch from Kraft. Line drive into left center field, and we're tied. Jordan will take third. Holt rushes the ball into short. Runners on the corners with two down. Three straight hits for LSU. Josh Smith, one for three, singled in the fifth inning. Runners on the corners. Kyle Kraft comes inside, gets a ground ball to Firth. Backhanded by Knopf, tossed to the bag, and stepping on it is Kraft. Curls will keep the game tied. The 1-0 pitch to Dykeman. Ground ball gets through left side into left field. Freeman comes in to score. Tigers lead 3-2 on an RBI single from Greg Dykeman. Lead off first, the 0-1 pitch. Hit high, a mile high into the air. Just behind first base, Cole Freeman calls it off, makes the grab. Tigers win, Tigers win. Come from behind victory in a 3-2 win over Nichols.